Hello, good morning, welcome. My name's Kieran Kirk. I am the Dean of the College of Science at the Australian National University. And, and my job as Dean is really to have broad oversight of, of what happens in science at the ANU. And for the next 20 minutes or so, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the science degrees that we have on offer at the ANU. I'll start, I'll tell you a little bit about the science landscape at the ANU. I'll talk a little bit about the structure of the degrees, the sorts of degrees you can do, depending on your interest. And then I'm going to turn to, at the end, talk a little bit about why we think the science education that we offer at the ANU is distinctive, about how what you get at the ANU is somewhat different from that that you'll get at other universities. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And then at the very end, I'll just give some contact details if you'd like to follow up uh, with further inquiries. So science at the ANU, it's actually packaged into a number of different colleges. And if you look across the whole ANU landscape, these are the sorts of sciences you see. We have uh, schools, departments in each of these different areas. So we have astronomy and astrophysics, biology, chemistry, earth marine sciences, environment sustainability, mathematics, epidemiology, population health, medical science, physics, psychology, and science communication. Some of these disciplines, some of these schools fall into the College of Science, some fall into the College of Health and Medicine. And my colleague, the Dean of Health and Medicine, will be giving a similar presentation this afternoon for those of you interested in some of the more medical end of the sciences. From a science point of view, the, uh, the general science degree that we offer is of course the Bachelor of Science. And if you come to the ANU and you do a Bachelor of Science, that is a three-year degree. And the reason why you might choose a Bachelor of Science as opposed to one of the more specific science degrees, which I'll talk about in a little in a minute or two, is that the Bachelor of Science gives you maximum breadth. If you don't really know what you want to uh, specialize in, but you have a broad interest in science, then Bachelor of Science is a good degree. We have a number of different types of Bachelor of Science. We have the, the standard Bachelor of Science. We have something called the Bachelor of Science Advanced, which has a somewhat higher cutoff. And if you come and do the Bachelor of Science Advanced, you're committing to a four-year degree. You're committing to an honours year after the first three years. And I'll come back and talk a little bit about that. But those coming into the Bachelor of Science Advanced are guaranteed a place in that honours year, in that fourth year. And as I said, I'll talk a little bit more about what that entails. And for those doing the Bachelor of Science Advanced, they also do along the way in the first three years, what we call honours pathway options and courses. So they do have opportunities to do some courses that are a little different from those done by the students who are done doing the more straightforward Bachelor of Science. And then there is a very particular degree with a cutoff of around 99 ATAR, the Bachelor of Philosophy. Again, that's an honours degree, the expectation, the guarantee is that you will do the honours year. And that's a very particular degree. It's research intensive. It's relatively few students in that course. And I'll say a little bit more about that later on. So those are the general science degrees. I've said they're a basic three-year degree followed by an honours year. If you come and do one of these science degrees in the first year, you will do eight courses. Each of the courses we describe as having six units, so that's 48 units. In the second year, you'll do eight courses. In the third year, you'll do eight courses. And that, if you do those three years, qualifies you for the Bachelor of Science. If you go on and do the honours year, then uh, that will take a, a separate year. And then that gives you different options at the end of that. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a minute. When you come in and do a science degree, the, as you go through the science degree and do second year courses and do third year courses, you do have to have an eye on what we call the prerequisites. If you're doing second year courses, they sometimes require that you have done particular first year courses. If you do particular third year courses, they sometimes require that you have done particular second year courses. So that's something you have to keep an eye on as you go through the degree. But the basic message here is that because of prerequisites, what you choose in the first year does matter. It does affect what you can study in the second year. What you choose in the second year does affect what you can study in the third year. But the main message is that we will help you with this. You'll have a lot of support along the way, a lot of advice to help you choose your subjects and help you carve out a degree that suits your interests and suits what you want to do. In terms of the basic science degree, as I said, it's very flexible. You do courses from science. If you're doing the Bachelor of Science, you can do courses from other parts of the university as well. When you're doing the science degree, you do specialize to some extent. You do at least one, what we call major. 
and you either do a minor or you do a second major. And these majors and minors are areas of specialization. So the science degree is very broad, but as you go through, you do uh, identify particular levels of focus. And then if you go on and do this fourth year, this honors year, then that's quite a specialized degree and you're choosing a very particular area of studies. But the science degree, as I said, is for students who want a range and breadth of subject areas, for students who want to do a, a degree where they can do science subjects and potentially subjects from elsewhere in the university as well. Now, I mentioned these majors and minors, that if you're doing a science degree, you do specialize to some extent. A major consists of eight courses. A minor consists of four courses. And majors are very broad. You might do a major in biology. You might do a major in chemistry. So there's some degree of focus, but, but still within that fairly broad. Minors are more specific. So a minor is something like, for example, biological neuropsychology. Four courses around that particular area, that particular more specialized area. And then we also identify, and you'll hear students refer to their specializations, and this refers to high level minors when they've combined usually third year courses in a particular way, sometimes a few second year courses as well, to give very specific focuses for their study, for their interests. And all that will become clear once you enroll. But the main point now is just to show that a science degree is very broad. You can do a lot of different subjects. As you go through, you will identify areas of focus in the context of majors and minors. Now, as well as the science degree, the Bachelor of Science and the other flavors of science degree that I've talked about, there are a range of more specialized degrees that have more specialized titles. And I've just set these out here. So there's Bachelor of Science Psychology, there is a Bachelor of Medical Sciences, there are a Bachelor of Health Sciences, which the Dean of Health and Medicine will talk about this afternoon. That's more of a pathway into medical and uh, allied health fields. There's a Bachelor of Biotechnology, a Bachelor of Genetics, Environment and Sustainability, and there's a Bachelor of Mathematical Sciences. So these are for students who are more clear as they come in on their particular interests. They want to focus in particular areas and if the areas match with these, then these are degree programs that map out uh, a pre-selected range of specific courses. And some of the courses are only available to people doing these degrees. Now, I've mentioned prerequisites already that as you go through, as you do second year courses, as you do third year courses, you have to have an eye on what you have done previously. When you're coming into the Bachelor of Science, in general terms, there is no prerequisites to come into the Bachelor of Science. We don't require that you've studied any sort of science at school in order to enroll for a Bachelor of Science. Having said that, however, if you're coming in and doing chemistry, then you either have to have done chemistry before, and if you haven't, then we can make arrangements. Then there is chemistry bridging courses just to bring you before you come into the first year to bring your chemistry knowledge up to the level that you will need in order to tackle first year chemistry. And then you will need first year chemistry if you want to do second year chemistry, and you'll need first year chemistry if you want to do a lot of the second year biology courses, for example. There's similar arrangements around mathematics, and also with regard to physics. If you're doing physics, you need to do mathematics along the way. Physics has mathematics prerequisites. So there are, although in general terms, you can come into the Bachelor of Science without any prerequisites, if you are doing particular courses, particular fields of study, then you do need to think about that before you come in. And if you don't have the courses from years 11 and 12, and you nevertheless want to do some of these subjects, have a discussion with us. There are ways that we can approach that. Some programs do have prerequisites as first year chemistry is a required subject, and those are listed here. But the short message is do come and talk to us about it. And depending on your particular circumstances and what you've studied, we'll uh, give you advice as to how best to proceed. Now, I mentioned in a science degree, you have the first three years and then you have the honours year, which is a more specialised year. And I've talked about the fact that if you do a basic Bachelor of Science, you do have the option of doing a fourth year. If you come into the Bachelor of Science Advanced, you already have um, pre-enrolment in the honours course. And if you're doing the PhD, then again, uh, you have pre-enrolment in the honours course. And the honours, as I've said, is a more specialised year. It's a fourth year. If you're doing maths and physics, then half of that will be coursework and half of it will be research in maths and physics. In other areas, for example, biology, that fourth year is essentially 90% research. So wherever you're doing it, there's a really strong focus on research. You will have a research project. It will be your own project and you will learn a whole range of different skills. You will have supervision by 
the scientists of the ANU, science at the ANU, you will be doing an independent research project. You will learn things like time management. You will learn critical thinking. You will, at the end of that honours year, be the world expert in something. Uh, and you'll get to know what that feels like. So it's a, it's a different sort of year. Um, and it's a year that we encourage our students to think about. If you do do honours, that can lead to a PhD, if that's your inclination. It also opens up more job opportunities for students who have honours degrees. And as I said, if you come in and do the PhD, then in order to get the PhD, this high ranked um, degree, you do need to do honours, you have pre-enrolment guaranteed. Same for Bachelor of Science Advanced. Same for the Bachelor of Psychology Honours and same for the Bachelor of Environment and Sustainability. Uh, a little bit about the PHB. This is a really unusual degree and this is a degree uh, specific to the ANU. It is the most highly selected degree we have. It does have a high cutoff. And for the students enrolled in the PHB, they have an individual academic mentor from first year Beginning in first year and more so in second year and more so in third year, the students gain direct research experience. They work with people in the laboratories, in the field, doing research at the ANU or in mathematics, for example. It's very flexible. Students are allowed to choose courses predominantly from science, but from all over the university. The honours year is included and there is a certain number of guaranteed places for PhD students to go into the ANU medical program. And if you're coming to the ANU with your site set firmly on medicine, this is a particular option that you should consider. Many students also combine science degrees with degrees from other parts of the university. And this is really quite an ANU thing. A significant proportion of our students are doing what we call flexible double degrees. So instead of doing a three-year Bachelor of Science degree, you can combine it with an arts degree, in which case it'll take you four years to get the two degrees with social sciences, with business, uh, and that will take four years. If you combine it with engineering or advanced computing, it will take five years. If you combine the science degree with a law degree and get a science law degree, that will take five years as well. And a significant proportion of our students doing science at the ANU are combining their science degree of one sort or another with degrees from elsewhere in the university, typically these degrees. I'm just gonna to touch on postgraduate coursework. We do offer a whole suite of master's degrees. So this is once you have your undergraduate degree, there are a range of master's degrees in most of the discipline areas that I spoke about in my very first slide. Uh, the master's degrees take two years. If you do what we call an advanced master's degree, there is a strong research component. The second year is research project and research training. So again, that's another feature, uh, again, a feature of those particular degrees. So I've talked a little bit about degrees and degree structure, and just, I hope, given you uh, an overview of the sorts of degrees that you might think about as you, if you're contemplating coming to the ANU. But this last few minutes, I wanna talk about why would you come to the ANU? It is a somewhat unusual university. It's a bit different from other universities. So what's so special about the ANU, and I'm going to spend a minute or two on that. Over the last 10 years or so, we have completely revitalized our infrastructure and our buildings. And we have in particular some dedicated teaching buildings, which means that the spaces in which you will be doing your education, in which you'll be learning, your lecture halls, your tutorial rooms, your practical laboratory space are really state of the art. So everything has been refreshed everything has been reinvigorated. This is one of our modern lecture theatres. You can see students are sitting around tables, each with their own computer screens. This is in our dedicated science teaching building. There's a tutorial room in the same building. So the spaces are certainly different from the spaces I learned in when I was an undergraduate student. So we have state-of-the-art new teaching spaces. At the same time, and this again is in our science teaching building, this is our teaching laboratory space. So again, these are just a few years old. They're state of the art, they're purpose designed for teaching students in undergraduate laboratories. At a time when many universities are reducing the number of undergraduate practicals in science degrees, mainly for the reason that practicals are expensive to put on, they're complicated, we are ensuring that that's not the case. We make a big thing of undergraduate practical classes. If you're doing chemistry, if you're doing biology, if you're doing physics, if you're doing earth sciences, you will do a lot of hands-on practical work in the sorts of laboratories 
that I've just shown you. And that is a particular feature of our degrees. And another feature is if you're doing environment, if you're doing earth sciences, if you're doing marine sciences, is that we focus a lot on field trips. We take students out to the field sites so they can learn directly in the relevant areas about the sorts of things they're studying. And if you do many courses in the sorts of areas I've talked about, they will involve field work. The field work is anything from three days to a week. The students go to the coast, they go to the mountains, the university subsidizes these. And again, we emphasize prac work, we emphasize field work, we emphasize hands-on experience for our students. And it is, as I hope you can see, a lot of fun. One of the particular areas we do where we do quite a lot of our field work is a particular campus that we have on the south coast of New South Wales at Kyola. So the university owns that, it's called the Kyola campus, and most of our students will spend some time down there on the south coast gaining experience. We have some laboratories there, we have some field work there, and that is a particular feature of the ANU experience that most students do have. Many of our teachers have won national awards and uh, the sort of teaching we do is very innovative. We have relatively small classes that gives us an advantage. Our staff to student ratio is very high. So we can do things because we have relatively small classes, particularly in the sciences, we can do things that other universities simply can't. And one of the things, and I just realized I skipped over the second dot point, and of course, this is something we can't do right now, the international exchange, but we are all just hoping that it won't be too long before we can, because it has always been a distinctive feature of the ANU degree and particularly the ANU science degree, is that students have the opportunity to study overseas. A very high proportion of our students do a semester with a partner university overseas. And we're certainly all hoping that that comes back and resumes its place as a strong feature of the ANU degree as soon as possible. Another feature of the ANU degree is what the science degree, or indeed ANU degrees in general, are interdisciplinary uh, courses. And we have a suite of courses that we call the vice chancellor's courses. And we call them that because they bring in students and staff from right across the university and they're novel courses. And they're courses with titles like creating knowledge, leadership and influence in a complex world, <clears throat> unraveling complexity, mobilizing research. So these, classes, the, these courses are available to our students and significant numbers of our students do pick up, for example, one of these as an opportunity to engage across the whole university to think in a different way about some big real world issues. And that again is a feature of the ANU degree. One thing I would emphasize is that research underpins everything that we do. The ANU is unique in Australia in that it was set up as a research only university. Pretty shortly after its establishment, it started bringing in undergraduate students. And as I've said, we now have a very sophisticated undergraduate teaching program, and we have many of our staff winning teaching prizes. But nevertheless, when you are here, you are part of a research community. Your lecturers will be telling you about the research that they're doing, that their colleagues are doing, that people internationally are doing, and it really flavors the sorts of teaching that you get. The teaching, the education that you get at the ANU is absolutely at the forefront of knowledge, in part because the people around you and the people delivering the courses are generating that knowledge because they are researchers themselves and because they're engaged in the international research community. When you're here as a student, we have a range of support structures. We have what we call peer assisted learning, the PAL program, so that students in first year learn from students in second year. We have physical areas around the campus, around the science area, where students drop in and congregate and come together and meet sometimes with lecturers, sometimes with each other, and socialize together and study together at the so-called drop-in centers. And if you do this fourth year, this honors year, you will be in state-of-the-art research laboratories. I showed you already the teaching labs and the undergraduate teaching spaces. Many of our research buildings are new. This slide shows the new chemistry building. It shows the new biology building. If you come and do research, as you will, as an honor student in your fourth year, you are working in laboratories that are as good as anywhere in the world. And we're very proud of those. So in terms of what's special about the ANU, why would you come here as opposed to somewhere else? Our researchers are internationally renowned. That's what the ANU is well known for. We have more Nobel Prizes than any other university. Our Vice Chancellor, Brian Schmidt, is a Nobel Laureate. And the research underpins everything we do. We have national teaching award winners. 
We have superb teaching spaces. We have superb equipment. We give good support to the students and the students who come here have good career prospects. And this is just some data from a recent survey. ANU grads in, from science are in the top three most employable in Australia. Our grads go to the public sector, the private sector and the not-for-profit. And our graduates, when you ask them, feel that they have been very well prepared. Last slide just shows some contact details. Thank you very much. Please do make contact with us if you have any interest and we'll provide you all the help, support and advice that you like. Thank you.